Welcome to our service of the word for the 10th Sunday after Trinity. A special warm welcome to anyone who may be joining us for the first time today. We're very pleased to say that uh, services are planned or taking place uh, in our three churches now, but online uh, services will continue intermittently for, for the time being. Uh, to fill in the gaps, as it were, when church services aren't being recorded. And of course, for those who aren't able to attend uh, the church in person. Last week, uh, Bishop Libby visited Old Brampton Church and took the service there. Um, and as part of the service, she guided our thoughts through the gospel story of Jesus outside uh, the boat his disciples were in on the Sea of Galilee, calling to his disciples to join him. And if you remember the story, Peter started to join his Lord, but when uh, his faith failed, he started to sink. The theme that Bishop Libby pursued was uh, courage, but courage based on trust. Trust in a saviour who can help or can keep us afloat uh, when times are challenging. And this uh, message is never more relevant than in these pandemic times. Although these times are challenging for us all, God is there for us and with us as always. So it's quite fitting that we begin our service of worship today with a first hymn, which is, O oh God, our help in ages past. And the words of the first verse continue, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal hell. And so we sing our first hymn, O God, our help in ages past.
grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Lord, open our lips so we can shout your praises. Lord, open, open our, our eyes so we, we can, can see your, your wondrous works. Lord, open our ears so, so we, we can, can hear, hear your call. Lord, open our hearts so, so we, we can, can live, live a life of life. life. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed are you, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From chaos you created the world, and in love you made us in your image. By your death and resurrection, you have brought us to new life. May the light of Christ shine in our hearts as we offer you our thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. We come together in the name of Christ to offer praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may be renewed for the service of God. And so we begin with prayers of penitence. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. As we say together, most merciful God, Father, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ we, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God who is both power and love forgive you and free you from your sin. Be at peace and forgive others. Forgive yourself. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, who, who has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore our hearts will dance with joy, and, and we, we shall praise the Lord. Our first reading uh, is brought to us by Rowan, uh, who is a parishioner in the church at Old Brampton. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is brought to us by David Riley, who is a member of the church at Lousy Green. St Paul's letter to the church in Rome. I ask, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people, whom he foreknew, 
for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you, who were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience, so that he may have mercy on them all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading today is brought to us by Kate Brookback, who is uh, our reader, and she will also uh, give the sermon. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer at all. And her disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in my sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If I said the name Boris Johnson, some of you may cringe, perhaps saying, Oh no, what has he done now? Or perhaps we don't like him for what he says and does. Perhaps he does not represent the party that we support. Perhaps we are fed up with politicians saying what we can and cannot do. But he is the one who delivers the message. The decisions that are made on our behalf. Decisions made in our interest and for our safety and well-being. We are all very aware that as time has gone by during this coronavirus pandemic, Things are changing all the time, and different information is coming to light. Therefore, Boris and his advisers want to prevent a second spike or another lockdown. So they have to make difficult and crucial decisions. And yes, perhaps even take a U-turn or change their minds at the 11th hour. When God sent his son in human form, Jesus showed the characteristics of being a human, as he too changed his mind. There were times when he wanted to spend time alone and pray, times when he wanted to be with his disciples, times when he wanted to wander and reflect, but people in need wanted his help, and they wanted his help there and then. Whatever Jesus was doing, he would stop and respond to their need. Several weeks ago we heard that Jesus was mourning the death of John the Baptist when the crowds followed him and gave up his time of reflection and grieving to respond by talking to the crowds and feeding the 5,000. We hear in the Gospel reading today that he was alone and praying when a woman approached him and wanted her daughter healed. 
Although she was polite and dignified, she was not going to take no for an answer. The disciples wanted her to go away and even Jesus originally said that he could not help her. This was time for him to be alone and pray. And anyway, he reacted to Jews, not to outsiders. So no, he was not willing to help. But then he saw that she was in need and changed his mind. The persistence of a Canaanite woman paid off and Jesus healed her daughter. The woman was determined for her daughter to be healed and ended up having to explain that even the dogs have to eat the crumbs from under the table. The woman was not bothered about herself. She was concentrated and focused on her daughter's needs and the ability of Jesus to meet them. She argued with dignity and respect and not with arrogance. She was gentle with persistence and humility. Scripture tells us that there are other times when Jesus does not give in to our needs and argues or explains his actions. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 he says, Come now, let us settle the matter. In Matthew 7 verses 7 he says, Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks find. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. He doesn't set limits or restrictions. He doesn't say that only Jews can knock on the door. The door is open to everyone. Even though this woman was a Canaanite, she believed in God's healing and Jesus recognised her strong faith and had compassion for her request. Was he being insulting to the woman by calling her a dog? Or was he drawing out more and more faith which he knew was in the woman? Did he do this so he could teach the disciples and the crowd around them? It does not matter what colour or creed we are, because if we dedicate our lives to God by giving our time, energy, love and attention to him, he will work on us, in us and through us. When we prepare ourselves for communion, we confirm our own faith and our own humility by saying, We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. And so we say together the Celtic Creed. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the Church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. 
And so we reach our time now of intercessory prayer. And so we pray. Bless, O Lord, your church with the grace to proclaim your saving power. That we may lead people from the captivity of fear and darkness into your light. Forgive us our sins and divisions. Lead us to a new unity and harmony. So at this time we remember the many churches who are getting back to in-church worship, that changed worship. And we give thanks for all those who have made this possible. We pray for Bishop Libby and all in positions of authority in the church, particularly in this diocese of Darkin. We pray that they may oversee the church at this challenging time with righteousness and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who lead others to you through writing, art or music. And we remember the difficult times faced by all those in the arts, when much is feared for the future. We pray for those who are hard-hearted or insensitive. And we pray for those who are hurt as a result. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Forgive us, O Lord, the sins that divide us. We pray that artificial barriers between peoples or nations may come down. And we remember, particularly at this time, the plight of, plight of migrants as they flee the horrors of their homelands. We pray for ethnic minority groups, for all who are judged because of their race, colour or creed. And we pray that all such barriers may be torn down. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for those who in love brought us to you, for those who shared their faith and their love with us. And we pray for homes and our loved ones at this time. We pray too for homes where there is no faith or where there is no love. And we remember particularly the stresses that the pandemic lockdown and its aftermath have brought upon families. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. In the world too, we pray for those suffering the aftermath of the terrible explosion in Beirut. That the world may work together to eradicate such horror, such fear, and such suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our, our prayer. prayer. We remember all who have loved ones in sickness. Remember, ring particularly those in our communities. 
those known closely to us. Give courage and hope to all parents who are anxious for their children. And we remember particularly those who have received A-level results in this past week. That the futures of those children are not marred in any way by the current situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember all who mourn the passing of a loved one, both in this, as a result of this pandemic and otherwise. We pray for all who will die this coming week. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And lastly, we pray for ourselves, for the present and for the times ahead and how we view it. And in a few moments of quiet, we bring before God any situation or problem or anxiety that is weighing upon our hearts and minds at this time. Lord, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in peace and life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect prayer for today. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, Give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. No worship is complete without that thread of hope. And so our second and final hymn we sing together today is Lord of all hopefulness.
Give us the grace to work for the coming of your kingdom here on earth. For the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And God's blessing. May the God who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you, Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Thank you for being with us today and um, I hope that um, you will join us again for these uh, online services. In the meantime, I send my wishes and the wishes of all the churches that your, your days will be at this time full of peace and love.